I'm Device from Astralis and welcome to Foreign's YouTube channel. It's a choke free song. Many will be aware that Device has long been one of my favorite players to watch, someone I admire as a competitor, a fan of his skill set within the game and his narrative. So when you hear that he's won so many MVP awards this year, so many most valuable player awards, he's broken the record on HLTV for it, he's already topped out entirely, you know, you might consider, where's the dilemma in that? Like, this isn't a video about the topic I discussed not that long ago about the fact that Device is the one that wins the MVPs for Strauss and it isn't Zipnix and it isn't Glaive. No, this is a separate topic. The dilemma for me is that on the one hand, one of my favorite players is winning the MVP award at almost every tournament. But I actually find myself having to be the person trying to temper people's praise for those accomplishments temper people's expectations for what this means of him as a player because the dilemma is that all MVP awards are not equal. They aren't created equal. They don't signify something equal. But once you use them as a unit and you say, well, this guy has five MVPs and this guy has two MVPs and this guy has 10 MVPs, it makes each of them sound like an identical unit. Like, oh, well, he was the MVP here. And so if you're an MVP at two events and this guy is at one, you must be better. But we don't know what those performances are like. Qualitatively, what was that one MVP performance like? And what was the other guys like? Was the other guys with the two narrowly over a certain opponent? And because his, all the other top players played badly once it got to the final and he just had a decent performance and he'd carried the quarterfinal. You know, what was the situation? Or is it simple putting up the best numbers we've ever seen on Nico, topping out ESL New York 2017 and just blasting the ratings and all the stats out the water? These are different qualities of MVP and we have to consider that because since Astralis has won most of the tournaments this year and a Device has been the MVP of most of those wins, almost all of them, it has seen his value get inflated heavily as an individual player. People act as though coincidentally this year Magus joined Astralis, Dupree got better, Glaive got even better, Magus got better, uh, Zipnix is still just a god, and now Device is even better. Like, we're supposed to believe these players are all even better. It just seems implausible to me. This is a function of winning, and when you have a very successful team, and what it will do to your numbers. That's why the angle of people back in the day saying that when Cold Zero was number one, that, oh, people like Nico and Simple, when Nico was in Mouse Sports, and Simple was in the bad Navi, and in past teams, oh, well, it's easier for them to carry on lower level teams. No, that's the point. It doesn't make sense in that regard. Like, you've seen when Device and Cold Zero, forget our own bad Bad teams. They're almost never on bad teams. When they're just on teams that aren't elite, like they aren't in the top three or four, they're still having good numbers. They're still being top players in the world, but they're not hard carrying. They're not dominating the game so that their team just has to win and that everyone has to look to them as an MVP award. They just don't. Their style of play doesn't really warrant that. They're just not that type of an insane individual hard carry because there's very few players like that in history. I think people go too far when they look at the Zantaras of the world on shit teams and act like they're hard carrying in the same way they aren't. They're at such a lower level. It ain't the same thing as when Nico and Simple hard carry are in theory the highest level. Sure, some of those teams were bad enough they weren't making finals, but they were playing against the same opponents earlier in tournaments. So the problem here is, due to winning all these MVP awards, you've seen Device's value get raised from not just world-class player, not just elite level player in the world, not just like best Danish player, best player for Astralis. Now you've seen people trying to suggest him as the best player in the world, trying to argue why he's better than Simple in 2018. And as a result, why? Because of these MVPs, that's one of the key things they put forwards, Device, they think, should finish the year ranked number one for 2018. And I personally think that is ridiculous. So here's the big point to make in this video. The, the MVPs that Device has won, particularly in contrast to the MVPs won by, for example, Simple, the best player of the year, Nico, another hard carry individual star, his MVPs, quite frankly, are not equal to those MVPs by and large. And in most cases, I consider those MVPs more impressive and more indicative and telling of how incredible those individual players are and that they are the best player in the world on their day at that particular time, whatever it might be, depending on the competition. Because those players are, even in top teams, hard carrying. Like FaZe Clan and Na'Vi, without Simple and Nico, would be an absolute travesty. They'd be struggling to make top 10. Even FaZe Clan might be like a low top 10 team. You take Device out of Astralis, yeah, they won't be number one. They probably won't win any tournaments. But you put in a Config, you put in some of the other good players in terms of Device, 
you could still have a pretty fucking good team. You could maybe have like the fifth best team in the world. I think that's possible. I think that's outrageous, even though Device is the best player for their team. There's the difference. And there is the difference, I think, that shows up in how they win the MVPs. You think of when Simple was in Na'Vi before Electronic got his role fixed. Obviously, the best example being Star Series Season 4, the first Star Series in this year in February. He was the best player I think I've ever seen. And he didn't have any help on his team. And obviously, he won the MVP award despite coming second in that tournament. When FaZe won tournaments with the stand-ins, particularly when they had Croman and they win like Belo Horizonte. Nico was so fucking good in these tournaments. It was unbelievable. Remember, he's not even playing with a real team. He's playing with like a stand-in and they're not practicing with the stand-in and he's just having to dominate other teams and go individually off to get his team win. When Device wins the MVP in Astralis, it's a different scenario than that. And qualitatively, it's very different. Even though he wins the same MVP trophy that everyone else gets and gets the same tweet saying that he gets an MVP from me if he indeed does so. So my problem here is, yes, Device earned those MVPs in the context of how you decide MVPs. He is the one who is deserving of them. The problem is that his MVPs aren't as good. And quite frankly, compared only compared to the Simples and the Nikos and the hard carry players, his are almost won by default. Because first of all, many of his MVP awards were debatable. You could look at a tournament sim. I thought Magus played as well here. Oh, Glaive had above and beyond numbers in the final on this one. Oh, Zipnix won tons of clutches in the semi-final to get them even to the final. There's a lot of times you could look. And obviously, Astralis is very unique in that. It's one of the few teams where you could suggest almost every member of the team as a potential MVP. I personally think you're usually pushing it when you put Glaive and Zipnix there. But there are times when they're so superlative that they can really be considered MVP candidates. So a lot of devices would debate like if if for some reason he played even one percent worse he might have half as many mvps this year despite the fact his team won just as many mvps and his stats will be very very similar also you got to add in he is mostly winning them as i brought out the point in my other video due to his role like it makes him the clear candidate because it is set up so that he will do the best when his team does the best generally and that he does the best on certain maps and that's crucial as to why their map pool is so strong and he gets the op and he gets the resources put in his hands and his team manages their economy the best so he has the op when he needs it and then he saves it very very well so he gets lots of chances with the op there are a lot of factors that make it so that he's just primed to be the one that wins i think generally he's just doing enough as a champion of the event to win over anyone who could be second or could be third in the tournament and have great stats and win he does just enough on the winning team that he keeps getting the nod over and over again because even though device is the best player in astralis in denmark and he is an amazing player you can make a case and we can have that debate of him versus simple him versus nico i think him versus nico for second in the year is actually the more interesting debate people have just put it out of their mind because they think nico wasn't as good the last few months and astralis wins everything right but i still think that's a much more interesting debate than device versus simple which i personally think is heavily in favor of simple but the problem is with device the team as i mentioned it's almost set up so if astralis wins the tournament logically device is going to the mvp if device plays terribly in a tournament they're just not going to win the tournament and since they're not having players who are super hard carry put up the stats even if they lose they're not generally going to get the mvps if they lose and voter fatigue means that even if device had godlike stats and they lost in the semi people will think in their mind he's had enough mvps astralis have had enough mvps oh, they'll win the next tournament he'll get the mvp there and they'll just give it to someone in the final or they'll give it to someone who won the tournament so actually in that scenario, what's interesting is that people even almost see that their performances aren't that dominating because they can be just as good, but if they don't win the tournament, Device isn't going to get that MVP, is it? It's going to be someone else probably from the winning team, quite frankly. Then you look at the fact he is an AWPer. Again, someone where, where the best AWPers take over the game in theory. Astralis also, quite crucially, neutralizes other star players when they play them. So especially if it's a best of five final. A best of five final could end up, even in the big formats we have now, the sizable, durable formats with lots of best of threes. A best of five final could still end up being like a third of the maps that you play in a tournament. That's how much it could be. So if Astralis does really well, dominates the final and shuts down the other star players it makes it even more likely that device wins the mvp award over a twists over a simple over nico whoever it might be that might be on the other side of the server over oscar or sunny these teams just aren't going to win the mvp award if astralis wins 
and they shut down the Cold Zeras, Oscars, Nikos of the world, and they don't do as well. Therefore, the device ends up just edging out so many of these MVP awards. But that alone, I mean, generally, I hate single factor analysis. That alone shouldn't make him the best player in the world or the best player of the year anyway. But in this particular case, it especially doesn't. Because I think actually compared to many of the other MVPs, it's not as in incredible. Even though in isolation, it is amazing to have won that many MVP awards. He's a player who's been through such a hard time in his career. It can be satisfying to see him coming out on top getting the better of all those people who held him back, the peers that he had back in the day, the people who could beat him and deny him the titles. Yeah, that's all satisfying. But, you know, let's keep it real. Let's not let's not bullshit around and overplay the person's award in contrast to some of the other incredible players we have in the world. This video was kindly supported by Dean Tanglis, Andreas Snazor westerland Gardner Wilson, Ollie J, Tobias Bernasconi, Nate D-O-double-G, James Harding, Kyla Harris, Travis Greb, Daniel Yordanov, and as always, a special thanks goes out to Jerky's Minion. Would you like to suggest a topic or a guest for some of my upcoming content? Perhaps you want to ask me a question in my monthly AMA. Do you want to see some teasers? See who's going to be the next guest on one of my shows? Maybe you want to take part in an esports discussion with me. Well, put your money where your mouth is and join the Skrilluminati today at the Patreon link in the description box below.